Any sign of Armstrong? He's vanished clean off the island. Vanished, that's the word. Like some damned conjuring trick. He must be somewhere. No, he isn't. We searched the house, too. You must have heard us. He's gone. Clean vanished. Scarpered. Good evening, Mr. Longbottom. Did you stay in your room the entire time? Yes. I'm not a complete fool. Did you hear or see anything? Nothing. After I told you where Philip had gone. Until just now, when he and Mr. Bloor returned. A good evening to you, Miss Claythorne. Stay safe. Did you find Armstrong? No, he's disappeared. We searched everywhere. Have you and Lombard been together all this time? Yes, I found him up on Ship Rock. Good evening, Mr. Bloor. What did you do before Bloor found you? Crept along the balcony to Vera's window and gave her my gun. Very generous. Then I went up onto Ship Rock. I set the bonfire ablaze, but someone will have to keep an eye on it throughout the night. Thank you, Lombard. Have you looked in the dining room? No. What is it? What is it now? Only three sailor boys are left. Chapter 8. Three little sailor boys walking in the zoo. A big bear hugged one, and then there were two. Three little sailor boys walking in the zoo. I've been all over this island more than once, and I've yet to see a bear. We should stay together in one room. I still have the gun. Wouldn't we be safe then? Possibly, provided you aren't Owen. We can't. One of us has to keep the signal fire on Ship Rock going. And there's something else. Armstrong isn't the only one of us to have vanished. The rest of us are here. Those still alive, yes. Wargrave's body is missing. Huh. I have to admit, not much seems to get past you, Narricott. Oh, how ghastly. We'd better find it. Vera is safe enough locked in her room with the gun. Law, if you and Narricott search for Wargrave... You mean for his body? Um, yes. Like. I'll keep the bonfire going. There's only one path up to Shiprock. If I keep an eye on that and have a flaming torch close at hand, I should be fine. I've got this. I'll be all right. I'm going to find Wargrave. Would you gentlemen mind escorting me to my room? My pleasure. Fine, Lombard. I'll start looking for Wargrave, too. Oh, Patrick. Right. My plan? on this final video is to do the last few chapters in this one last video um, and just do at the moment one ending okay that's the idea that I've got because there's this chapter is so short it's literally tiny there's, it probably will take me all but five minutes uh, I may change my mind I don't know um, but if I'm going to be, like, wandering around, then it probably isn't, you know. So, there's not a lot to do in this chapter. I might do, I probably will do this one in chapter 9 in this video. Dead is Hamlet's dad, but not shot, and the body is still warm. There's nothing I can do for the victim now. Yeah, there's no point even doing 
uh, this chapter in one video. I'm going to do this one and chapter uh, whatever it might be in this what in chapter chapter eight and chapter nine is going to be this it, this this video, and then chapter ten will be the final video. I don't know if I'm going to get all the uh, chapters, all the endings done. I, I just don't know at the moment. Law. Looks like his head is caved in. What is it? I heard a cry. It's Blore. His head's been smashed in by a marble clock in the shape of a bear. Oh, but there was one on my... Wait there a moment. It was on my mantel. When Philip escorted me to my room, it must have been already gone. One of you. Philip. Or you. Wait! The body was thoroughly searched. No need to disturb it now. Save it here. Dr. Armstrong, dead for hours. And by the looks of him, he's been in the sea most of that time. Chapter 9. Two little sailor boys sitting in the sun. One got frizzled up, and then there was one. Don't try to get in. I'm pointing the gun at the door. I'm not the killer! You're trying to make me believe Philip is the killer. Armstrong's dead, his body washed up on the rocks, and Wargrave is sitting in the screening room, dead, again. That's impossible! I swear it! This time he was bludgeoned with the law book he wrote. I think that's how he was originally meant to die. The next rhyme. Two little sailor boys sitting in the sun. One got frizzled up. That means we'll be safe till morning, doesn't it? No one can be frizzled up at night. From me. If you try to get in, I'll shoot. Okay. Time to go and check on the bonfire again.
to be honest with you, I'm probably just going to get this done in this video. I'm not going to do this uh, chapter 8 and chapter 9 in one video. I'm going to do all three together. No tricks, Narakot, or I'll light you up like Guy Fawkes. Lombard, listen to me. Bloor is dead. Armstrong's dead. So is Wargrave. You're next. You have to be. That may be your plan, but it won't work. There's no way Owen can approach you without being seen. Correct? As we're proving right now. So it must be some sort of trap. Already set before you came up here. What sort of trap? The Rhyme. Two little sailor boys sitting in the sun. One got frizzled up. The only thing approaching the sun on this island right now is that fire. Get away from it. I like a good explosion as much as the next fellow, but not when I'm the target. I owe you an apology, Narakot, and my thanks for saving my life. Believe me, I wasn't sure. You out of everyone had been responsible for the most deaths. Your detecting skills played you false there, old boy. You see, I'm not Philip Lombard. My name is Charles Morley. Got papers to prove it, too. Bill was a friend of mine. He committed suicide a couple of weeks ago. I was at his place when the solicitor Morris rang up. It sounded suspicious. I thought it might have something to do with Phil's death. I wanted to get to the bottom of it, so I came along in his place. Besides, a hundred guineas is a hundred guineas. So you're no murderer? I'll confess I've thought of murdering you more than once the past few days. Listen, Lombard. Uh, Morley, I need to ask you a terrific favor. You've earned the right. Can you play dead for a while? Stay out of sight. Vera must be the killer. The jury's still out as far as I'm concerned. But if Owen thinks you're out of the way, he may try for me. Or Vera, if she's innocent. Which is why I have to get back to the house. Say, old man, if you want to get into the house without making a racket, the window to my bathroom is open. I used it to get out on the balcony and, uh, make sure Vera was safe. Uh-huh. Okay, thanks for the tip. Will you lie low? Come running if there's trouble. It'll be a pleasure to return the favor, old man. Chapter 10. One little sailor boy left all alone. He went and hanged himself, and then there were none. I hear a voice. No, voices. They're coming from upstairs. This is it, guys. This is, I'm going to do the original, the, the ending that... I was, I'm going to plan on doing. If people want me to do the other endings and show them off again, that I will definitely do that if people ask me. But at the moment, I want to get this game done before I go away today. Uh, it's Sunday, Easter Sunday. So, yeah. understand how can you be here how could you get into my room so easily I've always had a duplicate set of keys Miss Claythorne as a former and actually the current owner of this house you own this house I have for several years I saw to it that Emily Brent died two weeks ago I took her place for the weekend my finest performance, I think. Worthy of the Oscar the Academy always refused me. But the bee stings! Hurt like hell and did nothing for my complexion. But Emily Brent was allergic, not me. It's my apiary, after all. Who are you? My name is Gabrielle Steele. 
You've seen my posters in the screening room. The actress? Some scandal in Hollywood. Scandal? Well, I guess if you call trying to kill your leading man a scandal, yes, it was. My final picture, last of the Borgias, something happened. Lillian Borgia, the character I portrayed, one day on the set, suddenly she... She was inside my head. She wormed her way in. That's the only way I can think to explain it. Telling me to do things. Showing me how. They called it a breakdown. I now like to think of it as a meeting of two minds. But why this elaborate plot? Why kill all these people? Why? Wargrave, of course. He was absolutely right. He was the central character in our little drama. The Edward Seaton trial? Yes. Edward Seaton. My love. My life. We met some years ago when I first came to London to star in a play in the West End. Then, after the incident in Hollywood, I came back to England to rest. They wanted me to rest. Edward and I fell in love. I cannot describe to you the depth of our love. You wouldn't understand. I've seen how you flirted with Lombard and Narricot, playing them off against one another. Did I? I was frightened and, and confused. I suppose that's as good an explanation as any. I was never confused. Edward was an innocent man, railroaded by that venomous old judge, simply to prove a point. That it was his courtroom, his law. Three days, Edward suffered. He couldn't bear the shame or what it would do to me. He killed himself for me. I wanted Wargrave to suffer those three days, watching as death approached, powerless to prevent it. But why the rest of us? I met Miss Brent at a resort soon after I arrived in England. Hateful old hag. I think I caught her qualities quite nicely. I heard how she had punished Beatrice Taylor for her so-called sin. Drove her to take her own life, just as Wargrave had driven Edward to suicide. I wanted to extend Wargrave's torture for three excruciating days. What better way than to make him watch others die? Crimes committed under his very nose. Death he was helpless to prevent. How his ego must have been scraped raw. You researched? Found us all? Others who had apparently escaped justice like Miss Brent. With the help of my attorney, Archibald Morris. How could he agree to help with such a mad plan? Mad? Madmen kill for no reason. No sense of justice at all. I only killed those who deserved to die. And Morris was a perfect little lawyer asking no questions as long as the money was good. He'd been responsible for a few miscarriages of justice on his own, so killing him was not a serious moral dilemma. Then the stage was set. We arrived on my island, and the play began. The trickiest part was goading Armstrong into getting so drunk he wouldn't notice the imperceptible pulse that remained after I took the curare. A few bee stings, and then a liberal application of Bellman's universal embrocation to complete the effect. It causes a nasty rash. He saw what he expected to see, a severe allergic reaction that can only result in death. You killed the judge twice? Hardly. The first time was some fool scheme he cooked up on his own with Armstrong, so he could pretend to be dead and catch Mr. Owen. I admit stealing Miss Brent's grey yarn and fashioning a wig from it was a nice touch. Oh, I was so angry. I couldn't think who had done it or why. I thought braining him with his own law book would be enough to fit the chancery rhyme. If you shoot me, you'll be arrested. Patrick will catch you. I'll deal with Mr. Narricot presently. Then I'll take poison. This ring I wear is a prop from the Borgia movie. Came in very handy this weekend. First for Marston, then Ethel, then my own Curari. And now, here we are. Once I'm dead, you can hang yourself and complete the rhyme. And if I refuse to hang myself? My dear. What do you think will happen to you if you're the only person found alive on an island with ten dead bodies? If you don't hang yourself, the law most certainly will. Patrick!
Thank you, Charles. That's right. If you ever need a break from Narricot, Charles Morley is in the London Directory. Treat her right, Narricot. As far as I'm concerned, you're a better man in a tight spot than Phil ever was. This little sailor boy isn't going near the sea for a long time to come. Will you listen to me now? If you insist. Hugo and Cyril went down to the beach early that day. By the time I arrived, Cyril was out too far. It was too late to reach him. Hugo claimed he had been distracted, helping a passerby with directions. I knew how it would look. I thought I loved him. So I told the coroner's inquest that it was I who had been on the beach. Later, when I was cleared, Hugo was jubilant, yet his feelings for me seemed to have vanished. I realized I had served my purpose. How would it have looked if the boy who stood between him and a fortune died while in his charge? He didn't think he'd done anything wrong. That was the most frightening part. Cyril wanted to swim out to the rocks. All Hugo did was let him. Mr. Owen invited the wrong guest. It should have been Hugo out there. No. I should have told the police the truth in the first place. I will now. I have no more right to subvert justice than Mr. Owen. Where is your brother? Plymouth, turning himself in. Thanks to your and Lombard, uh, Morley's statements, he's sure to be exonerated. And us? Are you still confused? No. I'm certain now. What about you? Well, there's another ending to that ten little sailor boys rhyme. One little sailor boy left all alone. He got married, and then there were none. And there you go, guys. That's the end. Silence, of that. please. I have prepared a special reward for you. The original ending to our little story is somewhat different than the one you have just experienced. If you can complete a final puzzle, childishly simple really, you will be able to learn the original solution to And Then There Were None, as Dame Agatha Christie first wrote it. Interested? Then your first step is to make your way to the dining room for a final treat. I'm just curious, though. I should keep my immediate goal in mind. That isn't where it lies. Oh, you can't go upstairs. Okay. So we're going to do this because this is the original ending. Actually, you know what? You know what? I will show off the original ending if I'm asked to. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um... No, not gonna do it. So, if you want to see it, I will do it. But for now, this is where the story ends. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. If there is a next time.